I previously thought we had the tiers worked out. I thought you needed a top seven pick and you were good. I thought picks eight through 12, it was all kind of a mystery box. You had no idea what you were going to get. Well, it looks like that has changed not only with the NFL combine, but with how mock drafts look currently and how the NFL draft may go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at the most recent CBS mock draft coming out from Kyle Stackpole, and I'm going to be diving into those landing spots, that draft capital, and how it would impact Dynasty Superflex rookie drafts. Now, the first thing I need to address is our 101 Marvin Harrison Jr. off the board. Now, I've had a ton of questions surrounding Marvin versus Caleb. I, I know a lot of people want to go ahead and take the best wide receiver prospect that's come out since Jamar Chase, maybe even better than Chase was. And I've been saying based off the positional value at wide receiver versus quarterback. I mean, if you just look at overall startup rankings, if you look at how these guys are treated in the open market, nine times out of 10, I'm just going to go ahead and take the quarterback, especially if he has rushing upside. But there are two worlds where I think you can go Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick one overall. The first being is if your Superflex League has 10 or fewer teams. Because in a 12-team Superflex format, you do the math. Everybody on average is either going to have two to three starting quarterbacks. You can assume a team maybe has four, and that's going to make another team in the league only have two. And there's always going to be that push and pull. There's always going to be that demand and supply for the quarterback position. Whereas in a 10-team format, everybody on average is going to have three to four quarterbacks. So, I mean, it's really going to be hard to go out there and sell a quarterback. Like, good luck selling Baker Mayfield. Good luck selling Matthew Stafford in a 10-team super flex format. Nobody's going to be buying. So, if you play in a 10-team league, go ahead, take Marvin Harrison Jr. at one if you're just loaded at quarterback and really, yeah, you like Harrison. The other instance where I think you could take Marvin Harrison Jr. at one is what happens in this NFL mock draft where somehow he falls to the Los Angeles Chargers at pick five. We'll talk about how that happens in just one second. Obviously, getting paired up with Justin Herbert for both the short and long term would be an absolute dream. I mean, we are assuming that it's probably not going to happen. I mean, if it does, everybody should be so damn excited. Now, I am looking at Las Vegas sports books currently, and I am seeing that the most likely landing spot for Marvin Harrison Jr. is where most mock drafters have him, and that's going to the Arizona Cardinals at pick four. In this mock draft, the Cardinals traded out. I, I mean, I, I the Giants traded up. We'll talk about it in a second. I mean, if he doesn't go to the Cardinals, uh, the next likely teams are the Bears or Patriots. I mean, the Chargers are plus 1,800 to get Marvin. So I do think it's unlikely but we are going off what happened with this NFL mock draft. Kyle Stackpole has Harrison going to the Los Angeles Chargers, and he would be my 101 in that instance. Now, two, we're going to go Caleb Williams. Nothing changes. He's uh, minus 1,100 to be the number one overall pick. Pretty much guaranteed to be a Chicago Bear. There's nothing to talk about. He has rushing upside. I know we've said it a million times. I think the Chicago situation is much, much, much better than what you typically have from a team with the number one overall pick. You have DJ Moore. You have the ninth pick as well, where they have some flexibility and what they can do with that. And obviously so much cap space this offseason. Now going over to our next guy. If Drake May goes ahead of Jaden Daniels in the NFL draft, especially with Drake May finding a better landing spot, in Washington than what Jaden Daniels would have in New England. Despite Jaden Daniels having more rushing upside, I will probably go Drake May. A lot of people are concerned about Jaden Daniels' overall size, aka his weight going to the NFL Combine. For whatever reason, he refused to step on the scale. I do think it's a little bit concerning. I, I'm not plummeting in my in my rankings by any means. It's just, we've been here all off season, right? Going back and forth. Is it May? Is it Daniels? Is it May? Is it Daniels? Here May goes pick two to the Washington Commanders, which is a better landing spot. And you also have the additional capital where an NFL front office, a scouting department was willing to sign off on May over Daniels. So if that happens, I'm probably going to give the slight edge to May, but I mean, they are pretty damn close. Now, this is where things get off the rails. J.J. McCarthy has obviously been picking up steam all offseason. And I've always said, I, I am not some expert quarterback scout. I mean, I am trusting what the NFL is telling us with these guys. I'm combining NFL draft capital with rushing upside with the situation that they're stepping into. And we are taking that all away to come up with our quarterback grades because I'm not going to be able to sit here and pretend that, oh, watching this guy on film, I know J.J. McCarthy is better than so it's 
I don't. I, I don't think really anybody making YouTube videos does. I don't think anybody really watching YouTube videos does. If we're going to be completely honest with each other. But in this mock draft, J.J. McCarthy goes pick four overall to the New York Giants. The Giants trade up with Arizona to get him. I, I, I really had not seen this until the NFL Combine. I, I saw this with the Kyle Stackpole mock draft. I looked at so many mock drafts to try to pick one for this video. And I promise you, I'm not just looking for the craziest one. I'm trying to find something that's somewhat realistic. I mean, I even went to Twitter. I, I searched mock draft. I mean, as someone, Ian Cummings coming out saying that he is now projecting out McCarthy to go to pick three over Jaden Daniels to the New England Patriots. So this is two different sources saying the top four picks in the NFL draft are going to be the quarterback. It's never happened before. I'm not necessarily buying it at this point, but I, I thought it was interesting to talk about though, because if McCarthy goes at pick four, if he goes inside the top five picks, he has some rushing upside. This is a quarterback that would have all the job security in the world. We talk about what draft capital means for these guys, where you can be Mitchell Trubisky level bad. You can be Blake Bortles level bad, and you're still going to start through your entire rookie contract unless you're Trey Lance. So you give me a little bit of rushing upside, a good coaching staff for the Giants. We have the Giants taking another wide receiver later on. I think I would have to take McCarthy here just from a value perspective of the quarterback position. Now, if Malik Neighbors, our next guy, found himself in a better spot, then maybe I could go ahead, make the argument for Malik Neighbors over J.J. McCarthy, even with McCarthy being the fourth overall pick in the NFL draft here. My issue is with Neighbors, obviously love the prospect so damn much. But he does go to the Atlanta Falcons at pick eight. I mean, if Atlanta goes out there, trades for Justin Fields, it doesn't really matter what they do unless they sign Kirk Cousins. It's not a spot that you'd be super excited about. You're going to play alongside Drake London, Kyle Pitts, two talented players in their own right. You have Bijan Robinson, a team that's probably ready to run the ball. Even if they trade for Justin Fields, the offense may be really good, but the passing volume may not necessarily be there. So, I would really not like this landing spot for Malik Neighbors unless they go after one of those quarterbacks that's more so the pocket passing option that's going to have a ton of passing volume to go around, like Kirk Cousins. It's interesting. I am still, of course, to go to flockfantasy.com, ranking Malik Neighbors well ahead of where I'm ranking J.J. McCarthy, but that's because I'm not expecting J.J. McCarthy to be a top five NFL draft pick at this point. Now, of course, if Las Vegas sports folks come out and say, yeah, McCarthy's now penciled in to be a top three NFL draft pick, you will see me move them up my rankings on flogfantasy.com. And of course, if you want to go get our updated 2024 Dynasty Rookie Rankings, we had to move Jalen right up today after diving a little bit deeper into the combine. You can find that over on flogfantasy.com with so many draft guides over there with our Dynasty Trade Calculator, with our Dynasty Trade Finder, with all the premium content and rankings of all your favorite creators. And yeah, if you use code flock on flogfantasy.com, you're going to get 30% off any subscription Plus, you will get yours truly breaking down your Dynasty Fantasy Football team with the podcast. Find that link in the description or the comment section. But let's go over to Rome. Rome goes pick nine to the Chicago Bears. So we actually got to see Rome at the combine. I mean, the man was a freak. The Chicago landing spot's weird, right? I, I mean, I, I really like Rome as a prospect. But you're going to a team that has DJ Moore. I don't necessarily think we can pencil in Rome to be the wide receiver one in the short term over Moore. I think you'd still have more going out of him in redraft leagues and a dynasty. Give me Rome, but that's besides the point. You have Caleb Williams, who I'm very excited about from a fantasy perspective, given the floor that he has with the job security, plus the rushing upside that he has for his ceiling. I just don't necessarily know if we could pencil him out to for sure be able to support multiple top end fantasy wide receivers here. I, I don't know if I can say it's a bad landing spot. I, I just think that we would rather have some others, to be honest with you. Now, going over to our next guy, we are going to be looking at Brock Bowers. So we are going to be doing this as if it's a tight end premium format. Right now, the teams that are most likely to take Bowers, according to Vegas Sportsbooks, Include the Los Angeles Chargers, Indianapolis Colts, Bengals, Bears, Jets, Titans, Saints, and Denver Broncos. Here he goes to the Denver Broncos at 12. And honestly, I think it does make a lot of sense. It's interesting what Denver's going to be doing here because if they're a big 12, McCarthy's already off the board. I mean, you hope that they solve their quarterback situation this offseason. You hope that it's already fixed by the time you actually get to the NFL draft. 
I mean, we can assume that their starting quarterback for 2024 is not currently on the roster. But if they make no play a quarterback, you can assume that Bowers would be going lower than this. Now, our next guy will be Brian Thomas Jr. I think Brian Thomas Jr. has cemented himself where he has to be the wide receiver for in this draft class. Not even close to anybody else. Not a good landing spot going to the Indianapolis Colts at pick 15. I, I think it would be a really good real-life fit. I, I think the Colts offense would be so damn exciting with Anthony Richardson, Michael Pittman, Brian Thomas, and Jonathan Taylor. But an issue that you may have is this is probably a team with a quarterback that can run the ball himself, that wants to be a rush-first offense where the passing volume is not necessarily there. I think Brian Thomas Jr. would for sure be the wide receiver one over Michael Pittman Jr. for the long term. In terms of the short term, I'd still be betting on Pittman from like a redraft perspective. So it's tough. I, I don't like the landing spot nearly as much as I like the landing spot for our next guy. We're going to throw Lad McConkey in here. He actually goes to the Kansas City Chiefs pick 32. I mean, with Lad, super hard to evaluate from a metrics perspective. Ran like 140 routes past year, Georgia. Stayed all four years there, right? I mean, if you're looking on paper, well, Lad's not necessarily a superb talent, but the film guys absolutely love him. I mean, you combine that with the fact that I mean, he had a pretty good showing at the NFL Combine. He would go round one here into a dream landing spot in the Kansas City Chiefs. I think he would honestly maybe give Rasheed Rice for a run for his money for the wide receiver one slot here in KC. Now, going over to our next guy, I will have Xavier Worthy here, pick 28. This would be the perfect landing spot for both fantasy football and real life. I mean, Xavier Worthy going to the Buffalo Bills, filling a big-time need that they're going to have a wide receiver, especially with Gabe Davis leaving. With Worthy, you wouldn't necessarily expect him to go out there and command a ton of volume in Buffalo. I think Xavier Worthy is going to be one of these guys that's a better real-life wide receiver than he is fantasy. I think that he's going to be able to stretch NFL defenses. I think he's going to bring, I mean, that 4-2-1 speed and really help out the other wide receivers on that offense. I don't think he's going to command a lot of volume. From a best ball perspective, maybe he's exciting and that you can expect big plays. I did move him up my rankings over on flogfantasy.com, however, just because... I mean, you run a 4 2 1, you're pretty much penciled in to be a round one NFL draft pick, especially when our guy, of course, Hook em Lawrence, did perform well at Texas early on in his collegiate career. I, I'm a little bit worried about the fact that he phased out later on, but keep in mind, you did have Adonai Mitchell coming in, and Mitchell will be our next wide receiver. Here he goes, pick 26. So this mock draft, I believe, was done the day before Mike Evans has officially re signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Even though Evans resigns, given what we had from Godwin last year, I still think you could see the Bucs deciding to go ahead and like pull the trigger on Adonai Mitchell in the late first round. It's just crazy to see the Bucs have the 26th pick in this draft. But anyway, if you are looking at this, Adonai Mitchell absolutely crushes the NFL combine. I mean, on paper, from a metrics perspective, horrible yards per route run at the very bottom of the class. Um, the targets per route run at the very bottom of the class. I mean, yards per team pass tense, very bottom of the class. Uh, the metrics are very bad with Adonai Mitchell. But film guys absolutely love him. He tested out extremely well at the NFL Combine, and he gets the NFL draft capital here to be a round one pick. So if you're looking at the overall profile, I think we would go ahead and then we'd have to take him. We'd have to take him over our next guy who has a much better metrics profile. If you were looking at raw production, the Combine, he looked like a twig. He weighed like a twig and he wasn't the top end athlete that he was sold to be still plenty athletic, but Troy Franklin is a wide receiver. That's how to move down after the NFL combine here. I, I know that we are annoying when we talk about weight and I know a lot of people think it doesn't matter at all anymore. I agree. I think it matters less than it did in the past. I still think it is something that we need to consider though. He finds himself a decent landing spot. No, I forgot to say, from here on out, rounds two and three, this is on your boy, okay? So if you disagree with any of these real-life picks or you want to say Mason, the Carolina Panthers would never take Troy Franklin at 33, feel free to go to the comment section and scream at me. I, I think that it would be a natural fit here in Carolina. Obviously, this is a team that has a big-time whole lot wide receiver. I think Franklin may be the similar to what you have with Worthy where he may be a better real-life wide receiver than he is fantasy, though, given his size. Now, sticking with a Carolina Panther, I'm going to go ahead and throw Trey Benson as our next pick. Now, we have Benson going to the Carolina Panthers at pick 65. Miles Sanders is still getting paid, right? Like, Miles Sanders is still there, but he's a complete toast. I, 
I think the Carolina Panthers may just try to make a move where they are giving weapons to Bryce Young, even if what he probably just needs is a much, much, much better offensive line to just try to give him any way out of the hole that he dug himself in his rookie season. I think Benson is pretty damn close to the RB1 in this class. If you were looking at the short term, obviously Jonathan Brooks can be the RB1 in this class. In the long term, we will have Jonathan Brooks here as our next guy. He goes to the Arizona Cardinals, pick 66. If you are looking at Brooks, hook him Lawrence. So running back, that would easily be the number one RB in the class if he did not tear his ACL last year. If you look at historical data, it's not great to see a running back going into the NFL right after a torn ACL. We're not going to get any testing numbers with him, of course. I mean, that's not the end of the world. Looks great on film. Obviously, a phenomenal receiving back at Texas as well. We'll go Keon Coleman. Now, we have Keon Coleman going pick 34 to the New England Patriots in this draft. Keep in mind, while New England does not have a quarterback just yet, they do take Jaden Daniels in this mock draft. So Coleman would be the wide receiver one for Jaden Daniels. Keon Coleman ran a 4-6-1. I'm not too, too concerned about his 40. What I'm more so concerned about is very similar to Adonai Mitchell. The man just was not productive at all at Florida State. Yards per route run, bottom of the class. Targets per route run, bottom of the class. He's young, similar to Adonai. There's another NFL wide receiver on his team in Johnny Wilson. So I think maybe you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but he also has to be someone that's moving down rankings just slightly after the combine. Now, our next two guys will be quarterbacks. We're going to be going with Michael Penix next. He goes to the Atlanta Falcons at pick 43. Now, I'm going to be taking him here under the assumption that Atlanta also brought in another veteran quarterback, where they also went out there and they traded a third and a fourth round pick or so. They traded something to get Justin Fields. They traded for a bridge quarterback. They're going to give Fields a shot. Doesn't work out. Maybe they give Michael Penix a shot. Now, if... They did not bring in any other quarterback and Penix was going to a situation in Atlanta where you have London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan, and Malik neighbors. I'll tell you it'd be a lot higher than where we have him here. And he'd probably be sneaking up maybe right next to Adonai. But I'm going to assume that Atlanta is going to have a quarterback that they bring in before the draft. And then our next guy will be Bo Nix uh, with Bo Nix goes to Minnesota pick 42. I am operating under the assumption here that the Minnesota Vikings also bring in like a Kirk Cousins, a Kirk Cousins returns. And then next is more so that long-term bridge quarterback where it's hard to project him out immediately. Our next guy, we're going to have Jatavion Sanders, Hook him Lawrence, staying in Texas, going over to the Houston Texans at pick 59. I think it makes a lot of sense from a real life perspective. I see people actually going out there and mocking Houston to take a wider receiver in round one. Where, I mean, I uh, understand it, right? I mean, I understand that Nico Collins and Tank Dell both look like phenomenal, almost elite level wide receivers at times last year. I think they're probably pretty good, but I think, honestly, a lot of it has to do with CJ Shroud just being a top five quarterback in the NFL. So I think you can add in another weapon here at Houston, but maybe it makes a little more sense to do it in round two at tight end rather than grabbing a wide receiver round one. We're going to go Roman Wilson. That's our next guy at 48. With Roman Wilson... Would be a fine situation going to the Jacksonville Jaguars where you do have Calvin Ridley on the way out. Don't necessarily know where Ridley is going to land. Decent draft capital as well. From a prospect profile perspective, I'm not in love with him. I mean, showed out well at the NFL Combine. I, I don't want to talk down on him. Just not someone that pops off the page. Like, obviously, the guys at the very top. Now, Blake Corum is a running back that is going to be so dependent on draft capital. It's going to be so dependent on landing spot. Where if he falls to... Day three of the NFL draft, where if he's a fifth round pick and he ends up going to like, I don't know, the Denver Broncos, I'm completely out on him. I, I mean, I don't think you can draft him inside the first two rounds of your dynasty rookie draft. If you look at what Vegas sports books are saying right now, he's plus 150 to be a Los Angeles charger. So people are penciling him in as a, the chargers are the heavy favorite. To find Blake Horn. I have the Chargers taking him here at pick 69. If that were to happen, obviously it's a dream landing spot. He has a role almost immediately. Now the question is, what does the upside look like? I don't think the upside is similar to Jonathan Brooks or Trey Benson. That's why we are going to have him here. Now Jalen Polk will be our next wide receiver. Now, yes, you already had the Buffalo Bills taking a swing on Xavier Worthy round one. We're going to have Jalen Polk going to the Buffalo Bills at the very end of round two as well. If you look at how Buffalo runs their offense, 
I mean, this is a team that wants to have three, four wide receivers in the field at all times. You have Gabe Davis leaving, Stevon Diggs aging. I think that this could be a pick that not only helps Buffalo in the short term and providing a little more depth to their wide receiver room, but also gives them a little more flexibility where if they lose out on Diggs in the long term, it's not just the absolute end of the world. And with Jalen Polk, obviously, I mean, it would be a good landing spot in Buffalo, even if there are a ton of guys there. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's one of the best offenses in the league. We're going to go Devontae Walker as our next guy. Daniel Jeremiah, extremely high on this play. I mean, I believe he had him as a round one pick in his initial big board. Here, we're going to take him with the New York Giants at the beginning of the third round. Keep in mind, the Giants traded up for J.J. McCarthy with the top five pick here. If the Giants are willing to sign off that they believe that McCarthy is a quarterback that is worthy of a top five NFL draft pick, we can assume that there's upside with the quarterback play in New York. And obviously, I mean, there's just absolutely nobody to throw to right now. We're going to go Xavier Leggett, 63. Kind of feels like a Shanahan pick. Guy kind of feels like a Niners selection. We have a wide receiver that's an older guy. I mean, this is, maybe I'm just drawing the Debo comparisons based off the school they, they played at, which is not something you should do, which is an idiotic thing to do, but we're doing it anyway. But maybe this gives them a little more leverage with the Brandon Ayuk situation. And if they're not able to be, bring Brandon Ayuk in for the long term, they're not complete toast. Now, every year there's going to be a running back that finds himself in a spot that kind of tanks their value and hurts someone else in their respective backfield as well. This is just an example of what you may end up seeing. We are going to go ahead. We are going to have Jalen Wright going to the Los Angeles Rams at pick 100. Obviously, not much capital here at all. I mean, this is the very end of round three, pretty much the very end of day two. I think that this could make a lot of sense if you're looking at bringing in depth behind Kyron Williams and a running back that can maybe take a little bit of his role. Now, of course, I'm not coming out here and saying that Jalen Wright is going to come in and be the starting running back for the Los Angeles Rams. But I think what you may end up seeing is you may see like a Braylon Allen go to Tennessee, Jalen Wright go to the Los Angeles Rams. In a running back that right now is penciled in to be just a three-down bell cow, whether that's Taji Spears, whether that's Kyron Williams, all of a sudden finds himself in a little bit more of a committee than anybody's expecting. We're going to go of just a slew of wide receivers through the rest of this. We're going to be going with Corley going to the Jets at 72, Ricky Purcell going to the Broncos at 76. We're going to go Johnny Wilson. I I mean, I still keep drafting Johnny Wilson in the last round of underdog drafts. I, I mean, I think this is a wide receiver that obviously it's probably a long shot, but I, I mean, it's more productive than Keon Coleman by a wide margin. Looks to be a better athlete than Keon Coleman as well. Um, Jalen McMillan uh, going to Dallas at 87 and Burton going to Philly at 97. I think Philly could actually go out there and grab himself a wide receiver three for the first time in a while in this draft. Of course, if it's a very cheap price tag, I mean, we're talking late round three, early round four. But I think that's all I have for y'all with this video. Again, thank you so much. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe, play Dynasty. And if you want to get access to our updated Dynasty rankings, both for one quarterback and super flex startup drafts and rookie drafts, if you want to get access to all the draft guides of your favorite creators, if you want to get our Dynasty Trade Calculator, Dynasty Trade Finder, if you want me to break down your Dynasty team in a podcast, all on flockfantasy.com, promo code FLOCK. They'll get all of that, a 30% discount and a free week trial. But I think it's all I got for you. Really appreciate you and really hope we get to see you out tomorrow.